Grace and peace be multiplied unto you, brother and sister, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We praise God in all things. So, uh, at the request of my dear beloved brother Horian, uh, I do this br this video concerning uh, the wedding feast, and just to expound on it a little bit more. And we give God all the glory, praise, and honor in the name of Jesus Christ that all this information is coming forth and being revealed. As the Apostle Paul writes, the Bereans were counted noble because they looked into the matters that Paul was speaking about and they found them to be true. So anything you see in here, pray about it, read about it, investigate that the Lord may reveal the truth, that you may be like the Bereans, counted noble because you seek the truth and you seek the truth is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way and the life. So I pray that this video may be of edification to you with the information uh, that we're going to find out and that you seek the scriptures as we are going to be talking about the wedding feast, the marriage. So first off, uh, one disciple says to another, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I thought about that and I was like, wow, you know, it's like saying, can anything good come out of the South Bronx? And I mentioned the South Bronx because I, I had the privilege of working there and living there for a bit. And at the end of the day, the South Bronx is considered the ghetto. So this disciple said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ, he's referred to as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the reason why is because of the Nazarene culture, because he was born there. And it is not by chance. So we bless the name of Jesus. Uh, there's also Galilean culture, which they adhere to. And the Lord in his majesty, I believe, chose this culture uh, because it explains and depicts more of what he means when he's talking about the marriage feast. And we praise God in these things. Uh, there is a documentary, which I do recommend to watch, among all the worldly things. This one is actually very good because it's informative. And it's called Before the Wrath, produced by Kevin Sorbo. And there's another, an actor in there called uh, Kevin Hay. So, uh, giving you the names so that you would find the right documentary if you choose to watch it. And it was produced in the year 2020 that it may be a blessing to you if you do choose to see it that you may learn uh, more of what I'm talking about so uh, concerning marriages we know that the scriptures the prophets uh, the book of Jeremiah the book of Revelation the book of Joel uh, speak about a bridegroom and speak about a bride now these are positions in the natural realm or offices or places where there's an expectancy. Just to give you an example, a bridegroom, it is expected that once this bridegroom gets married, he becomes the husband. And in like fashion, the, the bride, once the marriage takes place, she is no longer the bride. She passes on to be the wife. So we have an expectancy of a marriage, even in the language that we speak and to God be the glory. So just real quick, because it's gonna be short, sweet, and to the point. In Galilean culture, they had something called the betrothal, which now is known as the proposal. Like right now, when a male proposes to a female, usually they put it on Facebook, they put it on all these, on TikTok, the guy gets on one knee, produces a ring, possibly has a bouquet of flowers, and asks the question, will you marry me, right? And this would enter them into covenant, into an agreement. Well, back in the day in Galilean culture, guess what the culture was to propose, to betroth the spouse-to-be? It was to give wine. That's what it was. So here we have it that the husband presents wine and this was done in front of the whole town this was like the whole village got together and now we have a gathering pretty much but mainly is on social media but back in the day it was an honorable thing to propose 
and the bridegroom to be would propose to the bride and guess what if she took up the wine and she drank in front of her parents particularly the dad both parents will be there if she drank that means that she accepted and now she is betrothed now she is committed you see now she is in modern terms engaged to that man see and i hope you me speaking about this should bring into remembrance the scriptures the last supper as it is referred to with the lord jesus christ and what actually took place right so what ends up happening she accepts and the male brings forth a proposition and he reads it how he's going to honor his wife to be and he gives something to the dad which is called a dowry uh, which in some cultures it could be considered a purchase and not only is it a purchase but also a security that she that he can afford to take care of her and that if at any way in any position that the husband to be backs out of the deal or the proposition then the parent gets to keep that as security but we know that there was a dowry we were paid for by a price the blood of our lord jesus christ and to make this even shorter because gonna get to the point really really quick right what ends up happening the one who proposed the husband to be this is in galilean culture the husband to be goes back to his father's house and guess what he